Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Happy Friday, November 17th. Today, <coughs> we are going to put together our Santa tote bags. This is craft kit number eight um, that was made available. Each month, I've been offering one craft kit available, um, and we create together live with that kit making that project. So this month we are doing a Santa tote bag. So we have some, the rice paper that came in the kit, the um, textile varnish and glue that comes in the kit, the brush, which mine is an old brush. You get a new brush, mine is old. And the tote bag itself, which is rather large. And I'll show that to you in a minute. Um, so craft kit number eight. I always make it available to craft therapy club members first. They get first dibs on it and they get to buy it with their discount code. They always get to buy everything with a discount code, constant code for them. Um, and then after they have first chance at buying it, I give them 24 hours and then I make it available to the public. So there is, I believe, one more of these kits available. So if you want to grab the, the kit, I'm going to put the link in the comments. Um, you could go grab the kit and then follow along with this video to create it yourself. Um, and some of you have the kit and, and I'd love to hear from you if you purchase the kit and you're getting ready to create with me today. Let me know that in the comments. Good morning, Joy. How are you? Spreading the joy. Thank you, Jennifer. You're the best. Spreading the, spreading the joy all around. I appreciate you so much. Thanks for that. Hey, Denise. Hey, Janet. Virginia's here. Hello, hello, Diana. Hello, Facebook user. Not sure who you are, but happy Friday. And Debbie's here from Florida. Awesome. So glad you're all here. Thanks for being here. And yes, please, if you could be a love, hit the like button on this video. Um, I have not been getting a whole lot of those lately and I'm not too proud to ask you. Hit the like button if you could. If you like the content, you liked hanging out with me today, um, hit the like button and um, share too. Those are two great things to do to support uh, creatives or anybody really on social media who are sharing content with you. Um, Denise says she's fluffing the snow. Cute. I like that one. That one I haven't heard before, I don't think. Cute way to say it. Hey, Kathy Chef. Good morning. Good morning, Vicki and Cheryl. All right. Who's creating alongside me today? You're going to want to have your rice paper, your glue, the brush that you got in the kit, the tote bag, of course, and then some things that you did not get in the kit that you're going to want to have on hand are... Um, parchment paper. Well, I'm going to use parchment paper. You could use, um, you could use one of these Teflon, uh, craft mats, a clean one. Um, I keep one, I keep one that I never put paint on, um, because all of my other ones that I have, I paint on and I don't end up cleaning them right away. And I don't want any paint or glue to get onto a decoupage project. So I keep one for ironing, um, so for the iron on method of decoupaging napkins and rice papers, and also for something like today, I'm gonna put this in between the two parts of the tote bag to protect the opposite side from getting wet from glue. So you can use parchment paper for that, wax paper for that, um, or uh, one of the Teflon mats which if you're shopping for the kit, grab the kit from the kit section, craft kit section, and then you can grab Teflon mats. I sell this exact one. You get a set of two of them um, in the shop. You can grab that in the craft supply section. So there you have it. You're gonna need those two things. Um, I have a cup of coffee. You don't need a drink, but I have a cup of coffee and a water here with me. Who's creating alongside with me today? Hey, Deb, how are you? There's Christina. Hey, hey, girl. Welcome. Hey, Missy and Stephanie is here. Stephanie, haven't seen you in a few days. How you doing, friend? What's been happening? What's happening in your world, ladies? Um, Denise has her rice paper. And are you creating with us today? Or have you already done one, Denise? Oh, Vicki says my daughter's coming today. So I'm watching while cleaning. Awesome. Hey, Lois, have not seen you in a while either, my Vermont friend. Welcome, welcome. Appreciate that all you guys came out to hang out with me today. How fantastic. Good morning, Nancy. Hello, hello, Rita. All right. So, oh, one other thing you'll need or want. We need to cut off the white edges uh, on the rice paper. So either like a clean paintbrush 
and a little bit of water that you can use to wet and then tear. That's what I'll be doing. My little, <coughs> my little glass of water, <coughs> excuse me, that I store my dirty brushes in. I'm going to use that for my water. Or you could have my water brushes. I just actually threw those two out. I've grabbed them out of my, I mean, I said I have other ones. Hold on. Um, you know those brushes that, oh, sorry for all the banging. The brushes that hold the water in them, you could use one of those. I just threw two out because I think they were just gotten so old and used up. These brushes, where you store the water in the barrel and then you just squeeze and the water comes out. You can use one of those, but you don't have to have one of those. You can just, these oh, people who use watercolor paints um, and pencils, they like to have these on hand. Um, this would work great. It's just a regular paintbrush with a big round head and a bucket, like a little bucket of water, or like a container of water so that you can wet your brush. That's the method I'm going to use. You could also, if you prefer, you can use scissors and cut the white part off. That's totally up to you. If you use like pinking shears or something that has a decorative edge to it, that might be really cute. I really like the torn edge, so that's the one I'm going to use. Uh, let's see who else is jumping in here. Missy's packing for a trip to Colorado. Yay! I know Thanksgiving is almost here. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? It's crazy that it's almost here. Who is traveling? Missy's traveling. Vicky has her daughter coming to her. Who's who's staying put and hosting at your house? And who is traveling somewhere? And how far do you have to go? We're home. It's just the four of us and we're going to be home, which I'm happy that I'm happy about that. I do I have to tell you, though, uh, let me get my face on screen here so I can tell you. I have to tell you, though, well, this is a bad angle because you can see the, cam the other camera here. <laughs> I have to tell you, I do get a little sad. Major holidays make me a little sad. I have to admit this um, because I come from a huge Italian family who all live on the East Coast. I live in the middle of the country in North Dakota with my immediate family, my two kids and my husband. But I grew up, our holidays always had like 30 to 40 people in the house. Always from like after church, like right away in the morning, all the way until everybody went to bed, like people trickled in and out. Cousins would come for coffee. Our local priest would come for coffee and pie. If it was Thanksgiving, for example, um, you know, I have lots of siblings. I'm one of 13 kids. So all of my siblings would bring their boyfriend or girlfriend or best friend or their husband or wife and children. So my house has growing up, my family house, the Bruno side of the family always had like 30, 40 people in the house, usually the night before for food prep. And then the, the day of the holiday. And now it's just me and my two kids and my hubby. And it's, it's kind of sad. It makes me a little sad. It makes me homesick. Every holiday I get just a little bit nostalgic and homesick. Does anybody else feel that way? I'm 50. My kids are teenagers, so they don't, they don't get nearly as excited about the holidays because they're, they're little. Our holidays are small. It's just the four of us. Um, so there's not a whole lot of excitement and visiting and, you know, all the hectic and chaos that goes with having a house full of people. My kids really, they've experienced it a couple of times, but not their whole life like I did. So I get a little nostalgic for that, you guys. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. I usually call my family and now thankfully, like I'll usually FaceTime because they tend to get together still, anybody who can. Um, so, you know, there might be 20 of them getting together or 15 of them getting together. So I usually try to find one of those 15 who are getting together for dinner and call one of them on FaceTime. So I, they pass the phone around and I get to chat. But that actually makes me a little more sad. It makes me so homesick. I want to be with my family. But they live over like about 2,000 miles away. So that's a little hard. This person says, I understand. I have Portuguese family. We always had a full house. Yes, I miss those days. You get a case of melancholy. Me too, Catherine. That's me too. <coughs> I know. And, and and there's, of course, the holiday is joyful and it's always relaxing for our family. It's relaxing. It's just the four of us. There's not a whole lot of meal prep to do. My family doesn't like vegetables. <laughs> so I usually do like a cold veggie tray. Like they'll eat carrots and cucumbers and things like that. So I usually do a meat and veggie tray that we pick on. I'll do a potato because they'll always eat a, eat a potato where my, my boys are meat and potato men. 
They do not want Brussels sprouts or broccoli or spinach, which are all things I absolutely love. And when you're in a big family, you tend to have a lot of dishes. Like everybody would bring a dish, so you have lots to choose from. But when it's just the four of us, I usually, it's just like a regular meal. Honestly, it's not really that much different. Um, I mean, I'll do, I don't always do a cheese and meat tray. So I'll get that out and prepped so that when the turkey is cooking, we have something to snack on. So that's different. I usually make Chex Mix because my family loves Chex Mix. So I'll have that out. But it's not the same as the Italian... We always had like stuffed mushrooms and artichokes and like real gourmet stuff. <laughs> My family's Chex Mix and the cheese tray. <laughs> I do miss the big Italian, big Italian families. Hey, Carol. Uh, Kim says, I get sad too. Big Polish family. And since my grandma passed, it's just kind of stopped being big gatherings. So Kim, same thing for me. I never met any of my grandparents. Like we're talking like total personal stuff here. They were all gone before I was born because um, I'm like at the tail end of my, even like all the, my extended family, even the cousins, I'm like the youngest girl on my mom's side. I don't know, maybe even on my dad's side. I'd have to think about that in terms of first cousins. I'm on the, on the young end for our family. Um, so my dad and mom are both gone now too. So it definitely changes the dynamic of a family when the patriarchs and the mamas when the matri when they when they're when they gone it, it is it's, it, it's there's a like an, a feeling of nostalgia and like wanting to be that big gathering again denise says i have a brother in texas and michigan so we facetime yeah that's what we do too it's not the same but it, it is nice to see them <clears throat> i miss my mama i know i get it Catherine. i get who who said that oh i don't know who this was someone said i miss my mama on the holidays yes i get that same feeling Get that same feeling. Uh, me either, Dorinda. Thanks for sprinkling, Sandy. I appreciate you so much. Dorinda never met her grandparents, she said, either. Yeah, it's a little sad. It's sad. That's what big family, though, like really big families. Mm, okay, so let's get to the to the um do you ever get to go see your kids know all of my family? Um, I take my kids every summer. We go, uh, we've gone for up to six weeks. We used to go for, when my kids were not in school, when they were toddlers and not in school, I would take them home every summer for like four, six weeks, eight weeks. And we would visit, visit, visit. And they would get to spend really good quality time with cousins, aunts and uncles. And we would go occasionally for one of the holidays. I cannot remember the last time I've been home for Christmas. Um, we would go for maybe Thanksgiving or Easter with the children when they were not in school. Once they got to be in school, they don't get enough time off of school <laughs> to really travel that far. It takes us a whole day to go anywhere we want to go well, in terms of flights. Like it takes about 12 hours to get to Boston flying from North Dakota. It's crazy. It takes between nine and 12 hours, depending on how the flights and the connections work out. We live 90 miles from the closest airport. So we have an hour and a half drive to get to the airport. And then, you know, you have to be there about an hour and a half early. So that's three hours before you even take off. <laughs> and then you have the flights and the connections and then getting, you know, out of the airport with a rental car and all that. So normally it takes us about nine to 12 hours. So you can always on a trip shave off the first day and the last day is just a travel day. There's really no visiting going on then. Um, so small holidays like Thanksgiving, it makes it really difficult to, to get to Massachusetts for a holiday. We used to take the kids for about eight years. We took the kids to Florida for Christmas where I have a sister who lives there and my in-laws um, are there for the winters. So we would go down to Florida and see them for Christmas um, as a family. But we haven't done that in years because of my son's athletic schedule. He's not able to leave because he has practice all through Christmas. So... We just, we haven't done it a whole lot, but we do get home every summer. I bring my kids home every summer to visit with my family so that they know my family. Um, okay, let's get to the crafting. I love that we're all chatting. Keep chatting in, in the comments. Keep chatting with each other and getting to know each other. It makes my heart so, feel so full and happy um, that you guys come and hang out here in this Crafty Chicks community and get to know each other and share love for crafting and chats like this about the holidays or things that we're looking forward to or that make us sad we're talking about a little bit today i love that you're chatting um i do want to announce i i said the other day i would pick three happy mail winners so i'm going to tell you who they are three happy mail winners from my live the other day 
I went live working on that Christmas journal, junk journal, and I, I just was approved for a broadcast channel on Facebook. And I know you guys, I know there's like all these outlets between the different social media platforms and having a texting service. I know, I know there's a lot out there. But Facebook is rolling out broadcast channels for businesses. And what that means is for the first time, I will have the ability to send a, a message on Facebook through Facebook Messenger to Comfiness followers, you crafty chicks, <clears throat> all at once. I can send a message out and say, I'm going live or I'm doing this little like, you know, share challenge or I'm going to send out happy mail to someone who does this. So that's what I did the other day. I sent to the broadcast channel. There are about 300 of you who are already signed up. So I sent you guys a message and said, I'm going live and I'm going to do a special happy mail winning. I'm going to choose some names of, of happy mail and send happy mail to somebody on the broadcast channel who goes on the live and answers this question. And a lot of you did. A lot of you did. So <clears throat> I asked you to tell me what your favorite Christmas movie or song tune is to listen to this time of year. And so anybody who was in that live the other day sharing their favorite Christmas music or um, their favorite movie, they were from the broadcast channel because they're, they're the only people who got that message and chance to get happy mail. And these are the three people I randomly chose who commented from the broadcast channel and then went on the live and commented who I'm going to be sending happy mail to these three lucky ladies. Mary Lonovic, Robin Wilson, and Pat Quigley. Now, I know for sure I have Mary and Pat's addresses. So Mary and Pat, you don't have to do a stinking thing, but watch your mailbox for some happy mail. I'm going to send you some crafty good, craft goodies. Robin, I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head if I've ever mailed you anything. Have, if you've shopped my store before, if you've shopped for rice paper or glues or foils or napkins, craft surfaces, journals, any of my finished goods from the shop. If you've done that before, I have your address. If you've never ordered from me, I need you to send me a private message, Robin, with your mailing address so I can send you some happy mail goodies. <clears throat> Denise says, how do I sign up? I need to do all things grace. <laughs> Denise, I love that comment. I love it. Let me, um, let me grab the broadcast channel link for you guys. And you click on it and it just gives you the option to join which gives me permission to send you a message in private messenger. It is not two way. It's only one way, meaning I can send messages out to you. You guys can't answer me back unless you go to, to the other spot in private me in messenger and send me um, a message. But let me just see if I can grab this link for you guys. Uh, I should be able to do this quickly right here. You would think info um, broadcast channel. <laughs> Where is it? Come on, girls. Is Facebook going to let me? Please. Nope. Oh, boy, girls. That was my hope was that I'd be able to send you. Hang tight. Technology. Um, the link is, I've, I've posted it a few times on the page. And I'm trying to grab it from there for you. Why? I think I need to do it from my phone. I'm trying to do it off my laptop and it's not letting me. Strange, right? Okay, I'm gonna try one more place. And then if this doesn't work, Denise, I will have to, you can private message me and I'll send it to you or you could go back to the page and search for it. Yeah, it's not letting me here. Isn't that weird? So it's, it's interesting because <clears throat> I don't know if you ever noticed this, but when you're perusing different social media sites, they have different features on a phone than you would find on a tablet, than you would find on a computer. And I, most of the time, I'm on face, Facebook from a computer, not from my phone. But I know that I can get that link for you from my phone. I just can't, I can't find it. Can't find it on the computer. So weird. So bizarre. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Let me just, yes, I'm keeping Telegram. But what goes on Telegram will be different than what's on. It, some of it will be the same, but Telegram is where I do my live announcements for sure. And I, you guys know, if you're on my Telegram channel, I sometimes send you pictures of my neighborhood, my walk, my kids, what I'm making for dinner. Like, it's more like a text service. Like, you know, that's why I call you guys my text BFFs. <laughs> and now that the broadcast channel is here, it's just going to give me more opportunity to, to, to reach more people, which is I'm thrilled about, absolutely thrilled about. 
Okay, let me look one more place and see if I can find this for you guys. Nope. I'll grab it for you later. Or you can find it on the page. Just scroll down a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> so congratulations to Mary, Robin, and Pat. I'll be sending you some happy mail. Let's move on to the project. Uh, okay, the tote bag has two sides, obviously. It's a big tote bag, you guys. This was what was in the kit. It's a really big, in fact, I'm going to have to bag you up a little. It's really big. It has a really big gusset on the bottom. It was, it's sold as like a shopping tote bag, like to go to the grocery store or something like that. So it, it's, it's got, look, it's really wide and it has the same size gusset on the bottom, it has a nice handle on it. Um, it's all reinforced sewing and stitched together. We are going to decoupage the rice paper on the big panel on the side. Now, I sent you two pieces of rice paper in the kit. And I said, you can either use one or the other on one side of your tote, or you can use them both and put one on one side, one on the other side, okay? Today, for me demonstrating this for you, um, I'm going to just do one side and then if you're going to need that to dry and then which will take several hours maybe overnight and then you will have the second piece of paper from the kit you can then flip it over and do the same exact thing that we do today to get the other side done to together today we're just going to do one side so i'm going to pick oh which paper should i do should i do the santa with the, with the puppy sharing a sandwich with the puppy and ringing the bell see his little bell right there it's so cute give for christmas he's got his little thermos should we use the santa with the puppy or should i i'm really partial to this one it seems oh my gosh the santa with the children and it says a merry christmas with like a vintagey font down there i love this one i'm really partial to this one i wonder which one you think uh, Gina, go to the shop and go to the craft kit section. That's where the kit is. It's craft kit number eight. I think I have one left. Um, did I give you guys that link earlier? Didn't I? Didn't I drop it in the comments yet? Here's here here's the link to it. I'm just going to drop it in the comments now. If you are a craft therapy club member, don't forget to use your discount code to get your discount. I think the children too, Missy. I think the children too. I'm really partial to it. Okay, I'm going to put this one aside. Virginia says, that's the same one I chose. It's so endearing. I love it. Okay, I really love the torn edges. So I'm going to do the torn edges on mine with the paintbrush and water. <clears throat> I sometimes use an eraser, <laughs> an eraser to pull that paper away too. So you don't have to have that handy. You can just use your fingers, but an eraser makes it easy, it seems. I'm going to wet the edges where the white meets the color to get that white margin off of there. If you want to just use a scissor, a plain scissor or a decorative scissor, you can just cut yours off. But if you want to separate and get that nice torn look, uh, that torn edging to your paper, here's what we're going to do. I'm wetting it. I'm putting my brush on the white. Okay, it's hitting just the very edge of the color but I'm putting it on the white and I'm wetting. And I'll show you this here in a second. I picked a big brush because it holds a lot of water. When I pick this up, you can see the wet mark. See where the wet mark is? Haven't done down here yet, so that's still dry. But what this does, it allows you to tear this paper more easily, okay? I want the torn edge, but I wanna be right on the edge. I don't wanna lose any of this color. So that's why I put my brush <clears throat> on the white and then what happens is the water goes into the paper and it spreads out and it's enough so that I don't have to lose any color here. I don't want to lose any of my colored, the design. I just want to lose the white part. Okay. But I really love the torn edge look. I use, I like using the eraser. I think it's easier than trying to hold this up and tear away. I think I have more control with the eraser so I just started doing that a long time ago and that's just the way I do it <laughs> it's rubbery so it grips on that paper really easily and because the paper is wet I can just pull it away um, because this is white on white it might be a little hard for you to see so I'm going to grab a mat let me grab 
a colored mat. This may help you see it better. It's the same color on both sides. This may help you see better. And now that I'm working something in detail, I can get you down a little closer to what I'm actually doing. So see what I did? Where that wet line was, I'm just tearing away the paper with the eraser. If you let enough time go by, that's going to dry pretty quickly. So you might have to dip this in water again and wet. And you see where I'm putting the paintbrush. I'm not putting the paintbrush on the color. I'm putting it on the white right on the edge of the color. And the water actually, if you have enough water on your brush, it's going to seep into that paper. And you can see it spreads out. See how wide it's getting? You can actually see the water move. It's doing the same thing on this side. I don't want to lose any color though. So I'm working right on the edge of that white where the white meets the color. Just pulling this away. So you just keep adding water until it's easily torn away. I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to stick into the table too much. Okay, so I got this whole side off and we're just gonna repeat that on all the sides. And what that's gonna do, I instead of a really straight edge cut edge, it gives you this nice, like it looks like handmade paper <laughs> with that nice torn edge vintagey look to it. I missed a little bit of white right here. So I'll go back in and grab that, but I'm just gonna focus right now on getting the bulk of it off. And then we'll review all of it and make sure we don't have any white sitting around. So I wet the whole edge and then I'm going to come in and write on the line here. Time is kind of of the essence here because the, the it's surprising, but the water does dry quickly enough where it actually makes it if you're having trouble getting it off, then you need more water probably. So see, I have that little bit of white right there. I'll get that in a few minutes. I'm gonna, we'll go around the whole thing and make sure we got it all. I'm going to do about half of the long side at a time. Because if I <clears throat> go all the way down to the end with my water, if I go all the way down here with my water on this side, um, it'll dry before I get there. So I'm going to do about half of it tear and then I'll wet the other half and tear. Sometimes this kind of holds on to that bit of paper. So you just pull it off, clean it off so you get back to that rubbery feeling of the eraser. It really does help you grip, grip, grip this and pull it away easily. This is feeling too dry already. Right there at that where I stopped. I'm going to re-wet it And keep tearing. I'm trying to lose as little color as possible, but making all of the white go away. <clears throat> to add a little more, apparently. See how easy when you first put that water on there, it just tears away so, so easy. So obviously this is not going to fill the entire tote bag um, on that side. I'm going to center mine in the middle of my tote bag. Um, and then it's going to have some white around the edge, obviously, the, the tote bag that the paper's not going to fit on. And you could really, you could go back to that white section and fill it in. Like if you wanted to put... Um, different rice paper around it or paint the tote bag around this piece of paper so it's just not white. You could do that. Okay. I love that torn look. I love it. I have just a couple of spots where there's just a little bit of white left that I want to remove, mostly on this edge. So I'm just going to touch that with a little water and grasp at that. Can't even see it when I put it. It's so There's so little of it. It's hard to see when I put it down on the table. So I'm just picking it up and see right here, there's that little bit of white. I want to get rid of that. I'm trying not to tear too far into the paper. 
but get rid of the white. And rice paper is, you can see it, it's very, very fibrous. It's not like a napkin. It's really, really sturdy. Really, really sturdy. Like I can't do that with a napkin without tearing the middle of the napkin. But rice paper is pulpy. It has like paper pulp in it. Can you see all these little white striations in there? Like those little white bits. It's very pulpy. So when it's dry, it is very sturdy and easy to decoupage because it's not as fragile as a napkin. And you know, you girls know I love my napkins. I love decoupaging with napkins. Rice paper is a really good alternative for those of you who struggle with working with napkins because they are so fragile. If you struggle with that, go to my shop. I have, oh my gosh, I must have 60 designs of different papers. These are Christmas, obviously, but I have the all, you know, the holidays are represented or evergreen, just some florals, some butterflies, some steampunk, like all these different versions of designs of papers. I sell napkins as well, but if you struggle with the napkins, grab some rice paper and give it a whirl on a project and you will be amazed. For those of you who know rice paper and decoupaging with it, um, you can back me up in the comments and say, yeah, she's right. It is way more sturdy than working with a, um, with a napkin. Okay, I'm picking my, my side of my tote that is least wrinkled. This side has a really big crease in it right here. Can you see that? I'm gonna avoid that side. If your tote, if it got crinkled in the mail and it's holding on to that crinkle, you might wanna run an iron over it first to get rid of the crinkle before you decoupage. This is, I mean, it has a little bit of wrinkling, but not as big as the other side. So this one's nice and flat. So I'm gonna start on my nice flat side. If you need to run an iron over yours, do it. Um, what we need to do before we start gluing this down is we need to open it up and we're gonna put that piece of rice, either parchment paper, wax paper, or something, it needs to be something that's gonna like be waterproof or here. Like I said, I sell these Teflon mats, craft mats. Um, they're heat resistant, so you can do wax on them. You can, you know, I use these um, when I'm using the iron on method, I iron, put this over the project and it protects your iron from all the glue as you're ironing. Um, so these are great mats to have. I'm gonna stuff this in here and we need to stuff it in here so that it is protecting this side from getting wet. We're gonna be wetting this fabric with glue and the wet can seep through. And if it seeps through, I want it to go on the mat, not on <laughs> the other side. I don't wanna glue the two sides together. So I'm going to try to show this to you. There's a huge gusset. I don't know how this is going to work because camera wise, <laughs> this is going to be challenging. I'm going to try to lift you up a little because I have to pick up the bag to show you this. There is a huge gusset in here. If I peel this back, here's the folds. This is the fold of the bottom, right? It's a huge bottom. It's a nice big bag that you got in your kit. There's this, this fold here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my paper or parchment paper or your mat, you're going to put it on top of that fold because we want to protect everything but this section. So put it, make sure you put it on top of the fold, go all the way to the base, all the way to the base where that little fold is and make sure you're covering that as well with your parchment paper, wax paper, whatever it is, and then horizontally, you want to make sure it's under where you're going to be putting your rice paper. Now, so you can see, this is where the rice paper is going. I'm going to put it right down the middle. And so my craft mat is nice and big and it extends beyond that. So it's going to protect uh, really well everywhere where I need it to. Okay. It, mine cinched up a little bit. I got to pull it down a little further. I can see that it and flipping it around, it's cinched up a little. Okay, you want it to be nice and flat. You don't want a whole lot of wrinkles. <laughs> you wanted this to be nice and flat. Um, what's really cool is when we pull off all those white edges on the paper and we put this down, it basically, we can use these two handles as our center mark. The outside of the paper basically reaches the two handle stitches on the outside edges. So I can use my handle stitches, those two little X's up here that are stitching the handle in place. 
as my center line for putting my paper down. I don't have to wonder where center is. These stitches are gonna help me know that that's gonna be exactly centered, okay? So this is gonna fit perfectly on this tote bag top to bottom, the rice paper that you got. It's gonna fit perfectly. Now, if you wanted to, you could, see here's where the bag, the side of the bag ends. You could come in and put paint here or a different tissue paper or rice paper or napkin. I'm gonna leave mine plain. You also could, if you are the sewing kind or if you just had some fabric glue, um, you could put a, if you had a ribbon or some kind of um, trim that you like, a, a fabric trim, you could trim around the photo too to make it more like framed out. But I'm gonna keep mine really simple and I'm, we're just gonna glue this down. I'm gonna leave any of the extra embellishments up to you if you choose to put them on there. Yes, you can use cardboard with parchment paper. Good idea, Denise. Can the iron-on method be used on the fabric bag? Not with the products that we're using today. You wouldn't iron on this. This we're gonna put on wet. It's a textile glue made for fabrics and canvas. Um, you can get this in the store, okay? The kit, which was the tote bag, the two pieces of rice paper, the glue and the brush, I'm selling the kit. I think I have one left. I gave you the link to that a few minutes ago. If you don't want to buy the whole kit, if you just want the papers, you can go to my store and go to the search button and just, in fact, you guys, I could show you this. Do you know that StreamYard allows me to show you this? Let me see. Um, share screen. Let's see if we can do this, girls. Let me see. This could be really fun. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we can get this to work. Okay, so if I go to, can you guys, uh, can you guys see? Yes, you can see my screen. Now, if I go to, oh, somebody just purchased something. <laughs> somebody just ordered something from the shop. I was going to show you, I wanted to show you my, um, The website so I could show you how to look up this Santa paper. Hold on. No, that's not what I want. I'm gonna see if I can figure this out. This could be fun. Here it is. All right, here's my website. Here's the Santa tote bag craft kit and it shows you everything you get. You get the bag, it gives you the dimensions, it shows you the two pieces of paper that you get, you get the glue, and you get the brush. Okay, if you don't want all that and you just want the Santa paper, you could come to search products and put in like if you use the search term Santa, any rice paper or napkin, there's seven things that have Santa on them. It's going to pull up and show you any rice paper or napkins that have Santa on it. Or you could use the word Christmas or Halloween or whatever you're trying to look up. But there you can see here's this paper that I'm using right now. And then where's our other one? Here he is, the one with the dog right there. Okay, so this is a napkin, but it shows you all the Santa things that we have in the store. Or you can just go to the shop and you can shop sections. Like I want to go to the craft kits. I want to look at junk journal supplies. I want to look at foils and foil glue. You can shop that way. Um, but use the search feature. It is a really nice feature to have on the site that I'm, I'm able to give you guys for, um, <clears throat> for shopping really easily. So yes, you can get the print carol in the shop, thecomfynestwithgrace.com. Cindy, you never have to apologize for being late. We're just happy that you're here. We're just happy that you're here. Okay, what's really key when you are decoupaging on fabric is that you get your fabric wet, okay? Uh, I'm gonna get this screen bigger so you can see this better. Okay, uh, what some people, what you will see some people do is grab a water bottle. I'm trying to grab one without making a tongue noise, a water bottle and spritz the fabric. Well, that was like not really a spritz it was like a stream <laughs> we want we want more of a yeah like that you can wet it i don't normally do that i use the glue as my wet okay which means i use a little more glue because what we want to do is we are going to apply the glue to the fabric put the paper down and then apply the glue it's a, a varnish as well so we use it as a top coat then we're going to apply more glue on top to seal it in Okay, so glue on the fabric, paper down, glue on the paper. 
Okay, so two, two layers of glue. The reason that people wet this first is so that the fabric can can grab onto the glue more easily. It's it, it's not it's not completely dry. It's a little bit damp. I honestly I normally don't do that, but you'll see a lot of people do that and there's nothing wrong with doing that. Just make sure you have clean water like it's not it doesn't have any tinge of paint. Like if you use this to to spray some paints or inks and then you're going to use it for water, very dangerous because when you spray, you could get some of that color of the ink or the paint on your project. So preferably use a water bottle that you only ever use for water so that you're not getting anything else mixed in there that you don't want. And that's going to damage your tote. Okay. So you can spray if you want to, you don't have to, you absolutely must shake, <laughs> shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it all you can. All the girls are watching so do the best you can. That was a, when I used to cheerlead, that was one of the little cheers that we had. I don't know why, but it was like a fun thing that we used to do. We used to stand in a circle and Kind of chant that thing and do cartwheels and jumps and <laughs> it's like a warm-up thing for cheerleading <laughs> not funny all right make sure you give it a good shake i'm also going to make sure that it all settles back down before i take the cover off so I bang it on the table a couple of times mine is really full um, i have used this a couple of times but i still have a lot of glue left okay starting from the top i know that i'm just going to for my ease of mind i am going to line the paper up using these stitches even this horizontal stitch i'm going to line my paper up right under it okay this is going to keep me nice and even and centered on the bag so i'm going to start right here now i'm not i don't want to get the paper in there yet we're going to apply and we're going to do it in like one or two inch sections so what i mean by that is we're not going to take our glue and smear it all over the bag up and down and then try to put the paper on we're going to apply the glue to just like a one or two inch strip. We're going to put the paper down and then we're going to put the glue over the paper and then we're going to go work our way down. Okay. So please don't move ahead and just put your glue all over your bag. We're only going to put the glue on the section that we're working on. So it's nice that the glue is really white. It will dry clear, but it's nice that it's white because then you can see the, the canvas bag is kind of like a cream color. So it makes it really easy for you to see the amount of glue that I'm putting down and the way that I'm applying it, okay? The idea is to saturate your, your, your tote on this side with the glue. So for you to be able to see the way, the amount that I'm putting in and see how I'm going both directions. I'm going horizontally and up and down. The tote is weaved threads together that makes the tote, right? That makes the fabric. And we wanna make sure that we're getting glue in all the weaves, both directions, up and down, side to side. And you can see, I just went the width of my brush, which is a one inch brush. So that's when I said, I'm gonna work in one or two inch sections. I wouldn't do more than that. If you wanna do two inch sections, then apply another bit of glue here. But let's, if we, if we go on this premise of doing one inch sections, I've got the glue there. I'm gonna take my paper, I'm gonna center it the way I want it and I'm gonna push it down into that glue. Now, here, I need to make sure that I've gone far enough. I need to go just a little bit further on my edges here. I need a little more glue on that edge and on this edge. I shortchanged myself just a little. I wanna make sure that the edges get glued down too, okay? If you go over a little bit, don't worry too much because it will dry clear, okay? So I'm gonna push my fingers are dry. There's no glue on my fingers. And this is the beauty of rice paper. It's thick enough that <clears throat> although it's, it's, it's sucking in that glue, I can feel that it's starting to get damp. The work time, the time that you have to work on pushing this into the glue is longer. If this were a napkin, my fingers would be really wet with glue because it's so, the napkin is so thin that the glue goes right through the napkin immediately and onto my fingers. Then I have glue on my fingers. I can't keep pressing down on that really fragile napkin. It'll just tear. But with rice paper, you can. You have time to kind of press that into the glue. Now, remember I said we're going to put it under and we're going to put it over. So we're going to take a very light and we're going to start in the middle and we're going to take a very light bit of glue not nearly as much as what you needed on the top. And we're just going to glue, we're sealing it in now, taking a very little bit. Do you see, I'm not, it's not nearly as white 
the amount of glue is more translucent because it's a very thin bit of glue that I put down on top to seal it in place. Okay, got to really make sure with your brush that you're pushing the rice paper into the wet canvas so that they meld together. They're basically going to become one. Um, so the varnish and glue is beautiful because your, your tote bag, although you're going to have this piece of paper there, it is going to feel really cl like close to the original canvas. It's going to feel like fabric. It's going to move like fabric and you can wash it in the washing machine and it's not going to damage your paper. Okay. Um, I would not, I would like, if, if you got a little bit of a stain here near the paper, say you've used this tote and you go and you get vegetables or fruit and the strawberries leak a little bit and you get a little strawberry juice here right by the paper. I would not spray that with a whole lot of um, stain remover and rub on it a whole lot. I don't know that it would hold up to that test, but you will be able to wash this canvas tote with using this textile glue. Okay. All right. So now that first strip is all done. What we're going to do is we're going to fold this back so that we can get to the next one inch strip and we're going to do the same exact thing. And we're going to just keep doing that until we get to the very end. Okay, here, uh, here, when I pull this back just a little bit more, the little glue line, I can see that my, the glue line that I originally had there is exposed a little bit. Make sure that you're not leaving a gap where there's no glue. You want to make sure that you're actually overlapping this glue so that you don't have waves of gaps where things are not glued down, if that makes sense. You got to overlap your glue. And like I said, I would not work in in more than two inch, two inches at a time, because we're spending a lot of time really pushing this glue into the canvas. If you did that and you kept going and you went all the way down to the bottom, 12 inches later, this stuff will have dried and you'll have lost your chance to push your paper into your glue. So we got to work in one inch increments at a time. And I'm really pushing that glue into the canvas, all the little crevices of that canvas. See how thick it is, how it's so white. Thanks for fluffing the nest, Jana. Thanks for sprinkling. Yes, Cindy, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you guys. If you guys are getting value from this, if you think somebody else will get value from this, please share it. It helps us so much. And please hit the like button on this because not getting a lot of that action lately. And it really does affect our, um, our success on our pages. If people aren't responding well and showing that they li literally like the content, then our content is shown to fewer people with or without you sharing. <laughs> Facebook will just show it to fewer people and we lose out on the opportunity to meet more creatives. So please make sure, even if you're not hitting that share button, please make sure you hit the like button on our videos, on the stuff that we share, even on pictures, on jokes, on, you know, I like to share, I, I share some music sometimes. I share, I've been sharing a lot of Christmas ads lately. It's just touching emotional, beautiful Christmas ads that I've been finding online. I've been sharing them on here. I love that John Travolta one wasn't touching. It was just really cool. Um, so if you like that, when I share it, please hit the like button. We need that help. So what's, um, is anybody not having turkey? <laughs> Let's get real about the turkey dinner thing. My family loves turkey. So we are doing turkey and I am just doing a breast this year. I have always done a full turkey. Um, and we've done anything from deep frying it to smoking it to cooking it on the grill. I like it best just traditional in the oven, roasted in the oven. So that's what we're going to do this year. Um, that's just, we've injected turkeys. That's not my favorite. I really just prefer uh, traditional oven baked stuffing and potatoes turkey. That's my preference. But I my my husband's family really likes the injection and they like to have that flavor of the grill or um, smoking it. I don't mind it. It's just not my, my preference. So when I'm cooking the turkey, it's going in the oven. <laughs> That's what we're doing at my house. But I'd love to hear what you guys are doing. Anybody have any fun ways that you're prepping your meal or things that you want to share? I would love to hear from you in the comments. And what are your sides? What do you, we always have white potatoes because that's what my family likes. I do sweet potatoes. I really love sweet potatoes. And now my 18-year-old is actually eating sweet potatoes, thankfully. So the two of us will eat a sweet potato. Always cranberry sauce, right? I don't make my own stuffing. I don't know how. 
my dad used to make stuffing, but I didn't learn how. So I do stovetop, you guys. I know it's it, it, it's probably for some of you. you I just heard some virtual gasps. <gasps> like <laughs> when I said, when I said I use stovetop, I heard in my head, <gasps> stovetop. My family loves stovetop, you guys. <laughs> my Italian family, my Bruno side of my family, that's my maiden name, Bruno. They would gas. They would be like, no, you cannot use. You cannot use stovetop. My husband's family, the Kurtz family, good with stovetop. <laughs> so I know that that's probably not, if any of you real, um, like real cook, cook, people who really cook, who really do cook, who know how to make stuffing, I know you're not using stovetop. And glory be, you shouldn't if you know what to do. I don't know how to make stuffing though. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. So I, my family loves stovetop, so that's what I serve. I think, why mess with it? Why stress myself out? Give them what they like. My dad used to put like chestnuts in, in the, um, the stuffing he made. Oh my gosh, I just, it's so tasty and I love it so much. But I don't know how to make it. This person says, I use stovetop too. You and me, we could be united. You add onions and celery. That's a really good idea. Maybe I'll try to, uh, maybe I'll try to fancy mine up this time. Christina uses stovetop. Yes, yeah, stovetop girls unite. Cornbread dressing. Gina, I have never had cornbread dressing. I bet it's good. I love cornbread. Do you see what we're doing here, girls? Just one inch increments doing exactly what I described at the very beginning. I am stopping with the lesson part of this and just enjoying your company and chatting with you. Um, if you buy this kit or if you have purchased this kit and you have not yet, if you're not working with me now live in real time, you can come back and watch this video to follow along when you're ready to do your kit, okay? I have been attaching, once the live is done, I will take the video recording and I will attach it to the kit listing in my shop so that when you go to the shop to buy this, the video, you don't have to go to Facebook then and find the video. It is, I always attach the video to the craft kit in the shop so that when you buy the craft kit, all you have to do is go back to the shop listing and play the video from there. FYI, just so you know. Try to make it as easy as possible on you guys. But I'm not, I stopped explaining the how-to because we did that at the beginning and we're just repeating it. We're repeating it all the way down this whole, line, the whole line of uh, the bag here. Really pushing that glue in. Whoops. All right, so tell me what else you guys are eating. Does everybody do cranberry sauce? I like the chunky one. My family won't touch it. In fact, my brother-in-law, David, and my sister, they make a beautiful cranberry chutney. I love cranberry chutney. Like, I love the fresh stuff. You know, my family wants the can and they want the jelly. They do not want the chunky <laughs> bits of cranberry in there, although I really like it. My family, my kids, my husband and I, um, we have very different tastes and my kids I will say, unfortunately, have adopted the Kurtz palette. <laughs> don't take any offense if my mother-in-law is here or my in-laws are here. Please don't take offense. But my children have adopted, and that would have been my mother's palette. My mother was a Higgins. She was Irish. And she, macaroni and cheese was like, that's what we ate for lunch. And my dad wasn't around. My dad would never stand for mac and cheese. He would never eat that crap. Okay, he's Italian. He would make pasta from scratch. And it would be, he would have three things in the fridge. And he would make like a gourmet meal out of it. Um, but my mom was this totally the box girl. If I can make soup from a box or macaroni and cheese from a box, that's how she did it. My dad taught her to cook. Um, so I always grew up with like really fresh ingredients and really not a whole lot of stuff from a can or box because my dad, that's what he insisted on kind of being the Italian. Um, but if it were left up to my mom, it would have been more like the Kurt side where we we kind of live out of the the, the jar or the can or like I'll use jarred turkey gravy. I don't know how to make gravy. <clears throat> I think because I was like one of the youngest, my job was to make the salad and do the dishes. So I make a really mean salad and I can clean up like no tomorrow, but I don't know how to make stuffing. I don't know how to make gravy. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. No one ever taught me. My dad, I, my dad and mom did the cooking and they had some of the grown up, the older kids help them. So the younger kids, I just didn't learn it, unfortunately. But I love to hear what you guys are doing. <clears throat> and I one little quick um, brief 
insert of lesson. Um, my brush, my glue brush, I should have showed you. Oh, I can show you here. I just wiped it off on this like paper towel. Um, I was getting a little bit of the color on my brush, like after doing this, what is that, like seven inches down, going over the rice paper, a little bit of the ink was coming off on my brush. So I brushed it off. This is all you have to do. You don't have to go and wash your brush. You don't have to go get a new brush. Just if you see any bit of color transferring onto your brush, you want to make sure that it's white and clean. So just wipe it off on a paper towel. So just short little notification that at the halfway point, I was getting just a little bit of color there. And I don't want that. I want to, I want everything to be coming on to here clear. I don't want to be transferring any more color in here. Anyway, just short note. Now let me see what you're saying about dinner. Jennifer says mashed potatoes, green bean dish, green beans, cranberry sauce, black eyed peas, and cornbread stuffing. Oh, I want to go to your house. That all sounds so good. That all sounds so good. And have you done your shopping, Jennifer? Like you got all that stuff on ready to go. I can't believe it's already here, you guys. I'm, I'm being totally honest with you. I feel like November has just gone by in a flash. I was sick for several weeks with that darn cough and cold and sore throat and all that. And then Gannon got sick. He has been sick. He has missed three weeks of school. <laughs> he went to school today. I could not get him to go to yesterday because he was just not feeling good at all. It's been, it's been a thing with him. Um, Anyway, he's been home for three weeks, sick, unfortunately. We got him to school today, though. He has, like, six tests to do and all these assignments to make up after being gone for three weeks. He's in advanced math, advanced English, like a college credit English as a junior in high school. And he's in chemistry. He also takes auto. I said, damn, I don't, I'm not trying to put down the auto class. It's a Votech class. It's really hands-on stuff. So... I said, I would not worry as much about that until you can meet up with your teacher one-on-one -on -one and ask him how you're going to make up all you missed. The other stuff, like his math, he can practice the problems at home. His English, he can do his assignments for English and take his tests for English. He's been studying when he can, but he's been home for three weeks. But anyway, I started asking, did you do your shopping yet? Yesterday, I went to do the shopping, a little bit of shopping to get Gannon wanted to get him some probiotic probiotic yogurt because this, he has Crohn's disease. And I think the antibiotic they put him on is just killing his stomach. That's why he's been so sick. So I went and got him some probiotic yogurt. And I thought I better grab some more butter because we've been making cookies and we, we're going to need butter for the holiday. The whole section, one whole section of the butter was completely gone at our local Walmart where I went to get it. I was like, dang. <laughs> I had a little conversation with one of the one of the other ladies who's um, in our church family at St. Joe's. She was there too. And she's like, I don't know if I should stock up on all the butter now for the holidays. Or I said, look at, I got, I literally got the last, there was like a double pack of butter. Um, and I got the last one in that section, but the whole section, which is, a, was about, I would say three feet wide by about four feet deep. That whole section of butter was completely gone. I said, um, I think I'm going to buy as much as I can today because I have a feeling it's going to be like this throughout <laughs> the holidays in our small town. There is another grocery store in town that we can go to for sure. The local grocery store, which I shop from them at least twice a week too. I split my business between the two of them. But I thought I better get all my butter. <clears throat> Um, Vicky says, my mother-in-law taught me to make rice dressing moist and tasty. I will make that even if I don't cook too much. My my dad, Vicky, it's funny that you say that. I, I almost said to you, my dad used to put chestnuts in the stuffing. And he used to make a stuffing sometimes that was a rice stuffing. And I really loved that too. I'm really, I'm really open to trying a whole lot of things. My family is not. My kids and my... Did I ever tell you the story about the darn spaghetti? Did I ever tell you guys the story about spaghetti? Did I ever tell you this? Some of the craft therapy club girls, may, we talk, we do a lot of this inside the craft therapy club where we create together live and we chat in the comments. We do a project together. We do this all the time. Um, but I don't spend as much chat time with you guys here on the public page. Today we are, and I absolutely love it. I love getting to know you guys this way. 
but I may not have told you the whole spaghetti story with my husband and my kids. This happened years ago. My husband insists that if we have pasta, he wants a bolognese. I don't like bolognese sauce. That means like ground meat into, you put ground meat in, in the sauce. So for us, it's always ground beef. Like, it's like hamburger helper to me. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like that. I, we've always, I ate pasta probably three, four times a week growing up. But it was always different. Like sometimes it would have zucchini and Parmesan cheese. Sometimes it would be like an eggplant pasta dish, like an eggplant Parmesan. My family will only eat it with meat sauce, red sauce, meat sauce. That's, oh no, I shouldn't say that. I also make caponara, which is bacon and Parmesan cheese. They love that. But when we have red sauce, they always want meat in it. And they insist on the jarred stuff. <laughs> this is another thing. My husband was like, please do not mess with it. Just go get ragu, put the meat in it. That's how he wants his, and I did not grow up that way. We always just would wing it. Like you would have cans of tomatoes and then you would add stuff to it to make a tasty sauce. That's how I grew up. And I know how to do that. I prefer that. No, my husband's like, please don't, don't do that. <laughs> please just get the ragu, pour it in the pan with the cooked beef. And that's what he wants. That's And so we, I did a taste test one year, one night. I made two different sauces. I made the sauce the way I usually make it. And I made the dang ragu with the meat in it. I put meat in my sauce too, because that's, they like the meat in the sauce. They like the chunkiness, like the thickness of that. And the kids were little when I did this. And I said to my husband, I want you to taste test them right next to each other. And I want you to tell me that the ragu is better. You're not, he, I didn't tell them which one was which. I said, you have two sauces in front of you. One of them I made from canned tomatoes. The other one is the ragu. Okay, go ahead and taste them. And I want to know which one everybody likes better. Do you want, do you want how this all worked out? <laughs> the three of them tasted and the three of them voted. You guys, this is so funny. But I was going to put it to bed, this whole topic and this like little, not, we didn't fight about it, but you know, like bicker, like, no, he would say, please don't mess with ragu. Please just use the ragu. And I'd be like, it's so gross, you guys. And it has all that sugar in it. We should just be using cans of tomatoes and beefing it up ourselves, like dressing it up with vegetables and the garlic and um, garlic and onions and like the stuff that, you know, I like vegetables in there, like carrots and zucchini in a, like a primavera sauce. You know, he's like, please don't do that, Grace. Please just make <laughs> fragu. I didn't put enough glue down here, guys. It's kind of like my edges when I was missing. I have to get enough glue down here so I can get this last little bit done. So we did a taste test at our house. The boys were probably, my kids were probably 9, 10, something like that. Um, you know, it was a few years ago. I was going to put this whole topic to rest and just prove to them how much better homemade sauce was. All three of them, all three of them, blind test tasted this, and all three of them picked the ragu. <laughs> I was like, you guys are crazy. I, my whole, my homemade sauce lost, girls. It lost. Clearly, I don't make a good enough homemade sauce for the Kurtz boys. I like the fresh flavor of a homemade sauce with tomatoes and then beefing it up with all the fun stuff in it. And I like the fact that it's not always exactly the same. I like that because you use whatever you have, right? So that's what my dad would do if he opened the fridge and he had like, if we had eggs and bacon, he would make the caponara, which is, it's like a butter and oil, bacon and Parmesan cheese, black pepper, salt. I like to use garlic salt in it. Not everybody does. Sometimes it's just black pepper and salt. And so it's, it's like a, a white sauce, right? Because all it is is butter, cheese. I do add cream to it usually and the bacon. My family loves that. But when it comes to red sauce, they only want the ragu or that, they don't even care. It doesn't have to be ragu brand. Just any jarred sauce is what they want. It drives me batty. You make it with ground turkey. That's probably even healthier, Shauna. Good for you. I'm with your husband on that one. <laughs> Christina, you're with my husband on that one. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Jenna says cornbread dressing isn't hard. It's just work. I've never had it. I've never made it. So I don't know. 
Denise says, I'm a butter hoarder. I buy it whenever it's on sale, if I need it or not. Yeah, it lasts for a long time. Do you freeze it? I don't know. Can you freeze butter? I don't buy that much that I have to freeze it. I usually have one. I usually have two on hand, one that we're using, like one container, one pound that we're taking from daily. And then I have another pound in the fridge downstairs, just like kind of on call, <laughs> ready to go. Ruth makes a Portuguese meat stuffing with ground hamburg, pork, and linguica. Linguica? It's really not that hard to do. I love stuffing sandwiches the day after. Ooh, Ruth. Nancy's having turkey, boiled potatoes, stuffing, peas, and Waldorf salad, candied sweet potatoes. Wow, Nancy, that sounds good. Diana does candy yams without the marshmallows. Do you use, I was at the grocery store yesterday and I was like getting stuff. And um, I was like, canned yams. I've never had canned yams. I bought a, a bag of sweet potatoes. As we, Lynn and I have been eating sweet potatoes regularly. Um, Chris and Gannon like white potatoes, but I've never had canned yams that I know of. Do you use those or do you do you cook the yams and then mash them? I wonder how good the, yam, the canned yams are for making something like that. I guess that's what I'm asking. Uh, linguiça. It's, it sounds like an S, Ruth says. It's a Portuguese sausage. I haven't heard of it, but I would love to try it. Butter freeze is great, so hoard it, Nancy says. Oh, I'll do that next time if it's on sale, because it has gotten very expensive, hasn't it, though? Diana does use the can, and she says, but I added to it. So you add more to it. Um, yeah, everybody's saying, yeah, you can freeze freeze the butter. Yeah, see, Gina. Gina says, Prego is too sweet for me. My family likes the sweet. I think that's why they like the jarred stuff, because it's got the sugar in it. I don't put sugar in my tomato sauce when I make it. My, my, we call it gravy. I don't put <laughs> the Italians from the East coast. We call tomato sauce, like pasta sauce, gravy. That's what we grew up calling it. But I don't, I don't put that in my gravy sugar. Hey, Sarah from Canada. She says, I have some Christmas napkins. I will wonder if you like them. Sarah, send me a private message. That would be lovely. Uh, Hey, Anne, thanks for being here. My husband's family does the prego sauce, Jennifer says, um, but we do the sauce with the mushrooms in it. I add more mushrooms. Oh yeah, see, I love stuff like that. My family would be like, Whoa, mushrooms. They're, they're so picky, you guys. It's painful for an Italian girl. Painful, I tell you. Beef tenderloin. Ooh, Kim, that sounds good. I don't, Ruth, I don't. I don't know Gaspers, no. Um, I always have at least a pound of butter in the freezer. I hate to need it to bake something. I have to go to the store. Exactly, Missy. That's so true. I stocked up. Like I got, I don't hardly ever use Crisco shortening, but I bought a small, the smallest can I could find because, you know, when you're cooking for the holiday, sometimes a cookie recipe or something requires it or, you know, says you should use that. So I did grab some of that. I grabbed more cornstarch and, um, we use a lot of, um, uh, what's it called? Cornmeal. Um, when I make pizza and bread, I use that on the, the tray to make sure it doesn't stick to the tray. Um, so I did stock up on a bunch of baking stuff. Jennifer makes candy yams from scratch. I learned it from my grandma. Oh, what a nice, what a nice legacy to have. All right, girls, look at, look at our tote bag. I'm going to get this, this screen bigger for a second here. Look at this tote bag. It's going to be so darn cute. We need to just leave this alone. You need to just leave her be, okay? Um, and let it dry. I want to say something though. If you missed some a part of this, like if if every once in a while, if I'm working really fast and I'm not paying attention to the amount of glue that I'm putting on, some I'm looking for another project maybe that I did recently. This project here. I did this napkin on this tote. This it's another, just another canvas zippered pouch. That's all it is. It's like basically the same material. I did this napkin on this tote. And I must not have been paying attention too much because look, see that? I can feel that the napkin has a bit of glue on it, but I obviously did not apply enough glue and enough pressure to push that napkin into the canvas. So if you get an edge like that after you've left it to dry, just leave it alone. You, you know, I have this one little piece of rice paper that kind of came out further than the others. So I am going to pull that off. 
just because it just doesn't match. It's kind of way out there. Um, if this happens after it's dry and you have something like this going on, you're going to do the same thing. And I would suggest at this case, because now you have glue in here. Now it's not raw canvas. You have glue here. You have a little bit of glue on here. I would highly recommend then that you spray this a little bit and wet it and get that water worked into that little bit. I probably put too much water. I mean, you don't need that much water, but spray it. I tried to do it really close so that I wouldn't have water going down on this project. That's why I sprayed it so close and got so much on there. Wet that and then do the same exact thing. We're going to apply our glue. I use the same exact glue on this little Halloween bag. Um, but I must have not been paying attention too much to this corner because it did not, it didn't stick. So we're just going to do the same thing. And we're going to come in and we're going to go over. We go under. Really wet that canvas with the glue under. And then go over and let it dry. This, I use the same exact textile glue. I do sell this in the shop. Everybody got it in the kit. Um, it's a varnish and a glue. And it really does. It's not very shiny. You can see there's like no shine to it. It's matte. So I like that about it. It's so th that means that I'm not going to have a really shiny Santa on a on a matte canvas. It's going to dry matte and it feels really good. It feels like the fabric um, and it dries completely clear. You can't even see it. Uh, but for now, we just need to leave this to let it dry. And then, like I showed you, if you have any part that is just did not stick well enough, go ahead and do what I just showed you. Me and my corners, Gina. I know, I'm just notoriously missing my corners. We're using this Pentart Decoupage Varnish and Glue for textiles. It's specifically made for fabrics. It goes under as the glue, it goes over as a top coat of varnish, and then it will dry flexible. It will be flexible and it can be washed and it should hold up just fine. Um, no, you don't need to put any extra coats on top after it dries. If you applied it well enough, you should not need any extra coats. You can just leave it. It's gonna be a really thin, soft layer to hold that in place. All right, awesome. Okay, girls, I'm gonna run. I have two more lives today. I'm live two more times. <laughs> I have three lives today. And I had a meeting this morning. I have some really exciting stuff coming to the Comfy Nest. And I um, I think I may go live inside the Craft Therapy Club membership group and talk to you guys about it because it's going to, you guys are going to get it first. Um, but I've been working really hard behind the scenes to offer more for you guys and a better um, format of sharing all the workshops and the lessons and the art journaling and napkin journaling, all that's all the all the workshops that I've done over the years. Um, I'm going to be making them more easily available to you guys in a different format. <clears throat> so anyway, the Make a Junk Journal workshop that I did in July live is sitting and waiting for people. If you need to purchase it, if you didn't do it with us, then you can purchase. You'll be able to purchase the workshop at any time and have the videos available to you to follow along with. Um, that's just waiting to go. I just have, there's so much behind the scenes work to do to get this stuff up and running for you guys. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit of that with the craft therapy club members inside the membership group, because you guys really will be the first affected by it, the first to benefit from it. And then it'll roll out to non-members pretty much. It'll be at the same time, but they'll get the benefits a little more slowly than the craft therapy club members will, the membership members. Um, you do not need to iron it. Nope, Jeanette, no, nope. once it dries, it's ready to go. I would just check for edges, like check your edges to make sure, <laughs> like I had to do, check your edges to make sure they really suck down. And if they didn't give it another application and just let it dry by itself, I would not force dry this with a heater. I wouldn't do it. I would just let air do its job and let it dry completely on its own. Find a high shelf to put it on where it's not going to get touched or knocked over or moved. Um, yeah, so I'm live now with you guys. Thank you for being here. I appreciate your company so much. I'm live at four o'clock in the Artist Trading Card Mystery Box Club. We are opening the box that I sent out. We have four curators in that membership club. Um, and we take turns 
sending out the monthly kit, the monthly mystery happy mail. So this was my turn. November was my turn. We are opening the kits today and we're going to create artist trading cards with them. And then we have optional swaps afterwards, you know, among the members, they can trade if they trade cards if they want to. So that's happening today at four o'clock. And then I will be live at what time did I say, girls? It might be at six o'clock tonight for Facebook subscribers. Happy hour. For those of you that are subscribers here on the page, you'll find me here in the subscriber hub. Um, that's exclusive to members who are supporting the Facebook page. They they are um, basically gifting $1.99 a month to support the page. And I go live with them every week. We have a new flower letter for Facebook subscribers. We've been reading the flower letter series and doing happy hour. So that's today after the ATC group. It's a busy, busy day. So, um, okay. So anyway. Denise, why don't you private message me? I don't know what you used. So why don't you private message me and give me the details? Um, and if anybody wants the kit, if there's, I, I had, I think one kit left. Somebody made some kind of purchase on the site. I can tell because I got a little notification that someone purchased something. And I don't know if it was the kit or not, but the textile glue is in the kit. And that's what you want for fabrics. It's the best one to use for fabrics. Okay. Oh, Virginia, you're going to miss happy hour. Oh, you have dinner plans with friends, though. That's a really good reason to miss. I mean, you're going to have a good time. You can always catch the replay. You know, I hope you know that. You just go to the hub. Um, the hub is a special tab on the Facebook page that when you click on it, if you are a member, if you are a subscriber and you're a member of the hub, you will see all the content there. If you're not, you're going to see something that says support the page for $1.99 a month and you can sign up through Facebook. It's through Facebook Pay. Um, that's separate than the membership group, but it's just an extra special thing. We meet once a week and do happy hour and it's super fun and casual. I'm not teaching them workshops or anything. It really is just like happy hour. Like we're hanging out and talking and sometimes I craft, but more often than not, it's like a literally a happy hour. We get together and chat and get to know each other. And I share what's going on at my house and, or we're on my deck or sometimes I'm in the craft room. We read the flower letters to have your favorite beverage. Sometimes I have a glass of wine. Last week I was having hot tea. Tonight I think I'm going to have a Coke. I've been kind of like craving a Coke Zero. So I'm going to have that tonight for a happy hour. So hopefully any of you who are members, you can look for me later. And if you miss it, just grab, you can catch the um, the replay, no problem. All right, girls, I got to run because I got so much to do today. Um, have a blessed day. I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all healthy and safe and feeling good and having a very positive day. Um, I'll catch you next time. You can check on the top of the page for the schedule for the live videos. Um, I am doing an event this weekend. So I'll be live on Sunday for an event that is at the top of the page. So you can find that schedule when you can find the live and what the event is at the top of the page too. Take care, everybody.